There's some expressions you might be familiar with that all relate to the idea of multiple people working together. Things like, uh, too many cooks in the kitchen spoils the Vichy soi, or uh, the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. And the fact is that we're likely to encounter some serious challenges because our virtualization team on one side is going to be encountering the networking team on the other. One side is focused on VMs and making sure that they are online and accessible no matter which host they happen to be running on. The other is closely tied to network pathing, setting up IP addresses, routing, firewalls, and security elements. And yet these two must work together. And virtualization is challenging for the network team because once we can quickly roll out a set of virtual machines, we expect them to be able to get on the network quickly. But because of a need for isolation, the networking team can have a hard time keeping up. So to bring some simplification to this process, one of the newer forms of virtualization is simply called network virtualization. So let's look at what this technology is and how it's going to fit into the bigger picture of virtualization as a whole. Let's start by taking a look at traditional networking with these three hypervisor hosts and six virtual machines. Each host would manage its own internal virtual switch. And virtual machines could be plugged into those virtual switches. Now, are all these virtual machines just thrown into a pool and can all communicate with each other? Maybe, but the color coding that I've put here is to illustrate the idea of the traditional VLAN segregation technology. Layer 2 communication is only possible between virtual machines that share the exact same VLAN ID number. And because of that, if you're looking at IP addresses, virtual machines that are in a different VLAN operationally will need to have a different subnet that they belong to in order to enable routing to communicate with something in a different VLAN. But the hypervisor hosts in and of themselves are never providing routing. Instead, they simply are going to have uplinks to one or more physical switches. And those physical switches could be connected to layer three switches or to routers. And this absolutely works. But here's the challenge. These conventions for VLAN ID numbers need to be consistent not only in the virtual world for the virtual vir machines, but also on the physical world. In other words, the physical switch must be aware of VLAN 500 and VLAN 501 in order to enable a virtual machine to have local broadcast level communication from one device to another device in the same VLAN, in the same subnet, well, the switch has to know that VLAN in order to forward that traffic. But what if we need communication to something that's in a different VLAN? Well, then not only does the switch have to be aware of it, but our routing services need to be aware of those VLANs as well and have IP addresses so that it can function as a gateway so that communication could go from one virtual machine to another virtual machine by processing through the router, perhaps even going back into the same host in order to communicate with something in a separate VLAN. Now, this long extended hairpin turn that goes all the way out to the physical switch and to the physical router is not efficient for networking. And as you can see, this is not agile. Because if we have a new VLAN that we need to configure to, to support some virtual machines that are going to be isolated from everything else, we can't simply configure it on one host. We have to configure it on all of our hosts, and we'll have to configure it out here on any and all physical switches and on the routers that are going to support interconnecting that VLAN securely with any other VLANs. So how do we improve that with network virtualization? I'm glad you asked. Network virtualization is going to enable all of the hypervisor hosts to have a shared logical switch that all the virtual machines that need to have local communication with each other can share, and a separate logical switch for each of those local networks. By creating these network virtualization logical switches, Virtual machines can be given their own isolated network and yet can still communicate with each other. Now, like with VLANs, each of these unique logical switches will have to have their own ID number. Let's say it was 10,000 and 10,001, respectively. But the difference is our physical network is never going to be informed of these numbers. Well, if the physical switches and routers don't know about these new numbers that we're creating, how can virtual machines talk to each other? And the answer is encapsulation. If virtual machine one wants to talk to virtual machine three, they're in the same network. They should be able to broadcast to one another. 
So any message that's going within the same logical switch, the virtual machine's message will be encapsulated inside of a host protocol. For example, VMware uses a protocol called VXLAN. And so in this case, this VXLAN message will go through the physical switch to just host B, if we're trying to communicate with virtual machine three, or to host B and C, if, for example, I was sending out a broadcast message. So once that message has gotten to the destination, then host B, in this case, can de-encapsulate the message and forward it through the logical switch right where it needs to go. So the physical switch never had to see that message. But what if now we need to have a message between VXLANs? Say it was between even something as simple as VM1 and VM2. Well, in the world of virtual networking, not only do we have logical switches, but we can also have logical distributed routers. So all of the hypervisor hosts can have a local routing service with interfaces that are able to connect to the logical switches. So if virtual machine one wants to communicate with virtual machine two, that logical process all in the mind of the hypervisor host can simply go down into the logical switch through the logical router and go into the other logical switch and communicate with the virtual machine. All of that is happening right there, in this case, on hypervisor host A. It didn't have to touch the physical switch. It didn't have to touch the physical router. It's totally isolated. Notice how much more efficient that is than the long hairpin turn that we were talking about earlier. But because the exact same logical router exists in the mind of hypervisor host A, B, and C, whether it's virtual machine wanting to communicate with virtual machine 2 or 4 or 6, the process will work exactly the same way by going into the virtual machine through the logical router and then out of host A encapsulated using the VXLAN technology to be able to cross over to host B where it can then be forwarded directly to virtual machine 4. And the crowd goes wild because we've created logical switching and even routing without having to affect the physical network. Now, with all that said, let's say you're in an interview and someone asks you, so what do you think network virtualization is? Here's the easy answer. Network virtualization? Oh yeah, that's just when the hypervisor hosts share logical switches and routers and encapsulate virtual machine to virtual machine data so that the physical network is unaffected. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.